car right here. We're going to be doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You already know. We are going to be doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that. That in. Okay. You're not allowed to. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the Enabo Racing Channel. Uh, in this video, we are going to be cranking the boost up. And how we're going to do that is by wiring in a three port Mac valve into my Terminator X ECU. Um, I've seen one guy show you how to do open loop boost control and that's sloppy mechanics. So shout out sloppy mechanics. So if you're watching this with the Fox body, uh, I'm going to show you how to use it on the on three wastegate, all that good stuff, how to wire it in. We should be good. Basically we just have to get our vacuum line plumbing in order. We just got to get down and put another banjo fitting on the top of the wastegate because we're going to be running our vacuum line from our manifold. We're going to tee off to go through the solenoid and that way we can kind of divert some of the boost pressure that would be o opening the wastegate. We're going to divert some of that to actually hold the top of the wastegate down. Um, it's going to, yeah, basically just allow us to make more boost depending on the duty cycle of the Mac valve. So sounds complicated i'm gonna walk you guys through it and then eventually i am gonna show you where or how i'm wiring it into my holly and then also uh, how to set that up on my laptop so should be a good video here we gotta get started here we got a mac valve i bought one off of motion raceworks we're gonna have our vacuum line coming down off of our manifold here and uh it's gonna go down we're gonna cut it put a t put one of the T's to the solenoid and then the other part of that T is going to go back down to the bottom of the wastegate down here. And then we've just got our banjo fitting from the on three kit. So we're going to use that finally, get that uh, bolted on the top of the gate down there. I may put up a little schematic here or a picture um, to kind of show what's going on. But uh, nonetheless, once I have it all wired or plumbed in, then uh, we, we should be good to go. Um, and then we just got to wire in a 12 volt power onto this wire and then wire this one into an output on the input output harness. All right, so we got the car jacked up here and you know, this placement's not bad. We just got to put a banjo fitting on the top of the uh, wastegate there. Right now it's just vented, so we're gonna get that bolted in and then we can start running the vacuum lines. We're also going to change the direction of this vacuum line. Um, that one, we are gonna run the other way, away from the exhaust, and run it up to the top. So let me get that knocked out and we'll keep it moving. All right, we had a short intermission, had to slam some dinner. Shout out Monica for cooking some dank. But yeah, so I've got my two banjo fittings on the wastegate now, both pointing the same direction. We're gonna try and keep this clean. And they're gonna come up and hook to my Mac valve, which I'll mount to the uh, fender there. Let me show you guys why it's important to check where you got stuff routed. So this was my vacuum line going to the bottom of the wastegate and it was totally charred. Uh, yeah, not good guys, not good. So um, yeah, that was a problem. Yep, definitely was leaking. Um, so definitely had some vacuum leaks, all that good stuff. We got our vacuum line here coming off of the manifold and we're just gonna route it underneath TFI, all that stuff, just keep it nice and tight. And then we'll have it kind of running along the alternator wires here. I'm gonna heat wrap this whole loom and we'll run it down to the Mac valve that will be on the side here, easy peasy. And uh, yeah, we'll probably mount it up, just strap it up with some zip ties for now. Um, but yeah, we'll get this knocked out here. got our vacuum lines already ran here um, we got our manifold pressure this is going to be coming into port number one on the Mac valve so we're gonna be mounting it kind of like this and then we've got our number three port on our Mac valve here this one's gonna get the vacuum line that goes to the top of the wastegate so 
put that on there. Zip tie it nice and tight. And uh, yeah, we'll clip that. We have our vacuum tee perfect there. Um, we got the manifold coming in. One side of it is going to go directly to the bottom of the wastegate. And then the other side is going to go to port number one on the Mac valve down there. And then it'll come out of port two. And that line goes down to the top of the wastegate. And as you guys will see, we got them both hooked up down here. So very nice. We'll move on to trying to feed these wires through the firewall. And then uh, once we do that, we'll meet you on the inside and uh, yeah, get it wired up. We're just gonna drop the two wires down there and then hook one of them up to my little 12 volt uh, switched on power block there. And uh, we'll run one of the wires into an output trigger wire there. So we'll figure out which one there, but otherwise, That'll be it, and then we can move on to the holly, which hopefully shouldn't be too much, uh, too much craziness either. So, all right, so we are going to wire in the Mac valve using these colored wires. We're going to use the blue one for the uh, output trigger that'll go to the holly. It's like a sweet blue, and then I found I think this is leftover harness from the holly. It's a red. 12 volt switch wire, but um, that's what we're gonna wire it into, is just for power. And so yeah, we will splice these into these two little guys, it doesn't matter which one. Um, and so yeah, we're gonna run these and get her done. So we fished this gray wire with a green stripe out of the output harness here. Um, I believe it is uh, pin B3. If not, I'm gonna throw up a schematic here that should be able to show you which output I'm using. Alrighty, so we got my 12 volt switched power here for the solenoid with a five amp fuse. We'll throw the cover back on, that'll be good to go. And then down here, we got our blue wire into our gray and green striped output wire down here. So now we're gonna get on the laptop and set up the solenoid, come over, flash it onto the ECU, and then hopefully try and take this thing for a test drive uh, to make sure that, uh, you know, it's working. All right, so we should be live here, trying out some screen recording, so we're gonna see how this goes. Uh, just opened up my Terminator X software here. We're gonna open up our global file we're gonna work with. And, uh, but this is just purely to show you how to set up your output that you just wired in. So, gonna start off by creating your output. So you're gonna open up the IO tab up here and select outputs. And as you can see, I've named mine boost control and I set it up as a pulse width modulated ground signal, or sorry, it's a PWM output type and then you'll come over and you'll click enable and it'll still be not defined until you come up to your pin map so once you create it and enable it come up to pin map the screen recording wasn't picking up the pin map screen so i'm just going to do it real quick all you got to do is go to view outputs then you'll see after you click outputs you'll see that this boost control or whatever you named your output is up here you just got to drag it down to the correct output that you wired it into. So in my case, it was B3 and then you're done. So click done up here. Good to go. And then boom, it'll show you which pin it is. And as you guys saw, uh, it's the gray wire with a green stripe. So that's all good. So now we've got it assigned. Now we just have to set it up. So you'll click configure and I've set mine up with a couple of input triggers here, or just one input trigger. So it's not gonna use the Mac valve unless boost is above two PSI. 
and then down here it'll shut off once boost decreases below one psi so that way it's not just running all the time i uh, will just need to start making some boost in order to become a factor and then i didn't miss anything here nothing here and then right down here you're going to see how i have mine set up at the moment these uh settings up here i've stolen from sloppy mechanics uh he chose a fixed type there and then set his frequency to 18 he said that works really well mine seems to work pretty dang well as um as well <laughs> but other than that i've set mine up by tps and manifold pressure so boost in this case and i don't have the valve working at all below 33 or really below 40 p uh 40 percent throttle so once i get above that it starts to open and this is what's going to create boost so this is based off of a duty cycle. So right here you can see it's pretty much 15% duty cycle up to 12 pounds, and then it'll start to taper off so I don't make too much. Good little safety, but uh, nonetheless, I know that this setup makes eight and a half pounds uh, through some data logs that I took at the racetrack. And then I have ran it on 30% duty cycle and it was about two pounds of boost. So the max boost I ran was 10 and a half pounds and I was running out of fuel. So I had to dial it back just so I could, you know, still drive it with some more boost, but still got to watch it until I upgrade the fuel system. But uh, yeah, that's really all you should have to do. Um, this is just the duty cycle you set it up to. You can start it all off at, you know, 10 or whatever to start. And then once you kind of figure it out after some data logs, you'll find out what duty cycle here will make X amount of boost. And so you'll just have to set it to a number, make a rip, Go look at the data log and it'll tell you you know how much how much it works yeah that should cover the uh setting it up on the holly side and then what i also wanted to do was look at a data log and kind of show you guys that it's working so i'm going to show you kind of what to look for in your data log so this is a drag strip rip on a 30 percent duty cycle you'll see it was oh you probably can't even see the file but Ten and a half pounds. Um, this is, I think, fourth gear. Fourth gear. So full load. We made uh, ten and a half pounds of boost. Boost controller was at thirty percent, and everything was really good except for when I saw this fuel pressure number. Um, that's when I had kind of seen that we were, you know, something was kind of going weird because it should be going up, if anything. And over time, it'll start higher, like we'll see in third here. Um, shifting into third, we were up at 50 PSI, and then slowly it was tapering off. And the air fuel stayed just fine, but, uh, you know, not the best thing to see. So we're going to make some changes to the fuel system to correct that, but I just wanted to show you guys in a data log that it was working. And 10.5 pounds, 30%, looking good. All right, well, that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. Um, you know, it's kind of a longer install, but uh, you know, it's very Fox Body specific and also using the Terminator X software. There's a ton of videos of people setting it up, but often they're the closed loop boost control. So involving dome pressure sensors or, you know, different ways of controlling the boost. This is a very simple open loop way of doing things. And uh, you know, it's very, predictable you can set the duty cycle take a data log see what the boost is and you can kind of make that table and make a pretty good uh, table just based off of that and it's all computer controlled so you know you don't have to worry about the manual boost that's pretty much just setting that table to just one duty cycle the whole time at least with the holly you can kind of manipulate it to you know ramp in boost if you want to all of that is applicable using the way that I just did. Um, but yeah, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. I'm really good or trying to be really good about answering them and showing you guys how I did it. And so, um, yeah, as always, if you like the content, make sure to hit that like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, we're hoping to uh, bump these numbers up once we get the fuel system dialed in. So stay tuned. We're shooting for 15 pounds. That's what I'm wanting to run it at, or at least you know, run it on kill mode or have a scramble button to hit 15 pounds. That'd be pretty cool. So stay tuned as always. Thanks for watching.
Stay ripping.